We stand on the shoulder of giants. Since I'm short, I really appreciate the height boost. Everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Becky, your next door soulful creative. We're trying out something new here. And today we're going to do a little foliage study, which is why I'm surrounded by various screens around me. And we are in fact going to learn from giants. Very specifically, I've got this Urban Sketchers handbook, and this is titled Understanding Light. It's written by Katie Woodward. And we are turning straight into the foliage section because I thought, you know, as a part of this learning process, we do need to seek out advice or tips like why figure it out all your own and there are people who already kind of figured it out for you and all you have to do is turn to them for a little bit of guidance you know like so just chuck your ego at the door I mean you can figure it out if you want to and you can probably work out like kind of the learnings as well by yourself but here I thought I would pull up one of the books from my bookshelf and this is the foliage section and it's pretty cool actually because this book goes through for example like cool greens versus warm greens and then they also have these like observation checklists and it basically shows what you can we should keep in mind before you start sketching so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a little checklist for us to figure out what we should pay attention to and then they have also foliage under different light scenarios so for example this is shadows under foliage and then there's also a tip on decide earlier or not if your trunks are gonna be lighter or dark against whatever is gonna be behind them and then they also have sunbeams but I'm not too sure if you can see from the Hong Kong lighting right now it's gloomy as heck and I think it's because summer is descending upon us unfortunately and so it's going to be really quite hot and it is quite early in the morning about 7 or 8 ish so the fogs are still around and I can see some skyscrapers around me and they're just being covered by fogs at least the tip of them I'm gonna show you some and then there's also a dappled light section so that's also pretty cool and that's something that I've tried out a few times actually in this place as well yeah i think it's that's kind of it they also have like a gallery of like other examples of foliage done by different urban sketchers around the world and that's pretty much it really it's like such a short section this is it out of the whole book so you can imagine how jam-packed this book is and i really need to start like really looking through it and really learning through it but you know gonna take you along with me and perhaps we can all learn together we're gonna start by choosing our section of the foliage that we're gonna sketch and then we'll take it from there I just realized, right, like when you start knowing that you have like a goal in mind of wanting to sketch foliage, you just start noticing that there's so many different kinds of foliages. Like there's this one that we're sketching today and then there is like all these other ones as well and then these are like all different kinds of plants and it's just amazing like once you start like noticing that you're going to do something, like you just start noticing it everywhere and I think it's a good way to kind of prep your mind to do something is like when you are set that you're that when you have a goal in mind you just kind of prepare yourself for it like subconsciously and i think that's pretty cool for my supplies today we're going to be using this etcher a5 hot press sketchbook in landscape format i just thought it works really well the rectangular format of the video then we're also going to be using our art toolkit x shot cup and then of course we're going to be using our art toolkit watercolors which i will mist right here and right now it's always good to let um, your colors kind of soak in some water first before you start painting with them. And then of course we have our trusty Prisma Very Thin Watercolor Pencil. It's in red. Um, hopefully this will showcase some of the shapes that we're going to do, which is going to be really important I think, especially because it is a um, watercolor painting So and there's like a lot of foliage shapes. And lastly, we're going to be using our silver velvet travel pocket brush and this is going to be the tools of the trade for the day and honestly sometimes these waters they kind of dry up which i think like there may be some paint contained inside but you know we'll deal with that when it comes we always give our brush a good rinse anyway before and after painting so i think it'll be fine i've also got a couple of fountain pens and stuff in here but i mean they're always there probably don't need it and then also a couple of kleenexes to dry up my paint now let's get started Alright, let's 
let's go through this checklist bit by bit and we'll continue to reference our observational points as we continue the sketch. So first, the question is, are the majority of the leaves in the shadow front lit or back lit? And judging by how the sun is kind of a little bit dispersed throughout just because of this weather, I'm just gonna say that the leaves are maybe lit from top down. So it's neither, I guess it's not so much front lit or back lit, but because the background of the leaves are sort of in shadow because they're sort of clumped together and then like this is me standing here and these are the leaves. All right, so these, these are our leaves that are in cushion. So we can take a look at these leaves and they're, they're darker towards like these like shadow areas. Whereas the light hits from the front and this is a little bit brighter. So we are gonna say actually that they're front lit and um, we're gonna stick to that. So that means that we put the shadow in the back and we have to make sure to, to um, when we put the light in, we carve the light out. And then the next is, are the back lit leaves warmer or cooler than the front le lit leaves? How about the leaves in shade? I would say the front lit leaves are a little bit warmer than the shadows here because um, the yellow that hits them just seems to scream a little bit warmer whereas the shadows seem to be cool. So there's no real line warp games here because I think um, warm light and cool shadows is generally how the world operates unless there are some really specific light situations. So we can stick to warmer greens to start with so this is bright using cadmium yellow for the the first layer and then we're gonna slowly introduce the cooler blues and the cooler like lemon yellows as we progress to hit the shadows and then there's a question about dappled shadow which we're not gonna do because there's no dappled shadow and then lastly which is the most important one is can you combine a piece of foliage into groups maybe by tree or by grouping of trees so we're gonna zoom out a little bit so if we look at the trees right there we can kind of see that there are groups of like these kind of clumps that are available here and so maybe we're just gonna work with that we're just gonna see these separate clumps so one clump over here one clump over there and then maybe we'll break them down a little bit and sort of divide the clumps up by like these um, shadows where kind of like these two clumps hit together there's about to be like a shadow so we're just gonna do that and that's the principles that we're gonna keep in mind when we are sketching oh i have sat back down didn't have coffee this morning just yet this is my pre-coffee preamble and therefore i'm slurring my words a little bit or some of my pronunciations are just not up yet because i literally woke up and i was like i'm gonna sketch outside mainly because hong kong is like really really hot at the moment it is 28 degrees now and i'm already not ready for the summer <laughs> because this is also still like the end of May and we still have a long way to go for before summer ends in like August and September but anyways so we started off the sketch by like using like a really warm layer of yellow like I mentioned and then I started to put in a little bit of the shadows just because I realized like if the plants are front lit that it means kind of like the edges of the plants are bright yellow or like bright green and then the middle part and the inside part is the shadow so that's what I started off with. And I also realized like we are working with like three different types of foliages. So there's one foliage like that are the main ones, like the main clumps in the middle. And then there's also the foliage on the right side of the sketch that tend to be a little bit more strandy. And then there's one right below the clumps of the main trees that we're drawing. And those are like leaves. So there's three different foliages, three different types of greens that we're going to introduce here. Even though I try to make them as similar as possible just because it is starting to drizzle. And even though it's not a lot, it's kind of like particles of water just floating through the air. This is a watercolor sketch still. So I don't know how sensitive the painting is going to be towards the watercolors. And therefore, I am going to make sure that this page stays dry as best as possible and we're gonna speed through it and I think at the end the painting took about like 15 minutes so we actually did manage to do it in like a considerable amount of time yeah so I also tried to make sure that I don't focus on each particular and single leaf so we're just gonna draw a big picture and I think it really helps to sit kind of away from the trees and not like observe all the little tiny bits of pieces up close because literally if you look at trees it's kind of like looking at atoms or something you know living living, living creatures right like the more you zoom in there's just more and more and more details and it's just an infinite amount of details and that's part of the reason why I'm so intimidated by like trees and foliage to begin with but I love them I love how irregular their shapes are adjacent to like buildings in Hong Kong because there's a lot of a lot of squares, rectangles, sharp corners, and then you have this like random shape of like random clumps. And I really love the juxtaposition 
So it's something that I always try to incorporate in my sketch as best as possible. It's just kind of like the mix of the cities and the and the mountains and the trees. And that's part of the reason why I love sketching around in the city. So I wanted to get better with foliage. And that's why strategically, we're going to start pouring through the books that I have in my house. I've got a couple. There's like this, there's like James Gurney, there's like Nathan Fowkes, Sarah Burns. So there's quite a lot of books and wisdom that we can pull from and the giants that I mentioned earlier. And these are people that I admire their sketches. Like I admire the way they sketch a lot and I think that's how we all start right we kind of like start painting uh, because we have people that we admire and we want to kind of be able to create great works like them so there's nothing wrong with learning from them and just trying to to sort of absorb the concepts that they have spent a lot of time honing in as well and that we can kind of follow through on the same path because they they really carved those paths out for us and of course they also follow their own giant so I don't know like like for example like Stan Prokopenko he follows his like teacher James Watts so it's all these like you know we're all just following in the footsteps of other people and that's okay that's that's a part of the learning process is seeking guidance and following them and hoping that you get something new every time uh, back to the sketch because <laughs> I'm still rambling apparently so I noticed that for the trees on the right side they are a lot brighter than the trees on the back and it's just uh, so I tried as best as possible to like kind of carve the shadows around the thing um, around the leaves in the front and I think this is the really tricky bit about watercolor that I still haven't mastered yet is carving out light or carving out shadows depending on where you're looking at it from and basically it's like because watercolor is light to dark and you can't go the other way around on like wash so the way to sketch is you just have to preserve the light as much as possible and I'm actually contemplating learning more about this especially with like negative space like I'm, I'm really so in love with the concept of negative space because it's sometimes it's like the things that are not set that are like really big anyway that's a separate video but it's it's been on my mind for a while now and yeah so we just keep sketching in these uh, these shadows and just slowly carving it out I know the plant on the front right also has like some lavender colored like flowers in them so I try to put that in I don't think it came out super saturated in the sketch and yeah that's the other thing that I'm trying to figure out with watercolor is how to get saturation because when the colors are wet they look so bright like the yellow in here in this in this right area of the of the painting like it looks really bright when I first lay down the color and then it dries and it becomes this like really pastel muted yellow um, so this is something that I have to also really try and produce and maybe we'll do another video actually on like vibrant watercolors just bring out video ideas um, see which one you guys like are you guys curious about anything because I love like thinking about these art goals and like learning goals on the fly and I would love to kind of learn all of them but if there's anything that you guys like in particular I can probably do that first so I thought um, the plants were like all these irregular shapes that I need to combine together and then to kind of like ground them I put in these um, I don't know what you call it these like walls in and it's kind of like that straight shape that was contrast against the like variety of edges that you see here on this plant and then my favorite part is I get to dry brush it because if you see here these are like walls that I've seen weather like they've gone through typhoons they've gone through like rain they've gone through drizzles like now they've gone through Sun so there's bound to be like a lot of like moldy stuff kind of like growing in the cracks and the best way to portray them is with dry brush so how you do dry brush is you literally take the brush imagine this tip the thing and then you rub it up against a Kleenex. This is the Kleenex, the tip of the brush, the belly of the brush is like this part. And you kind of like absorb the water here. What I personally do, didn't mean to tap you there, is I test mark at the other side of the page because that's what it's for, right? Like I test mark it here and I just want to see if that's like the kind of texture that I want. And then I will do like a small mark before I slowly add it up through the rest of the painting. And I think with that, the sketch is done. 15 minutes is up. Kinda wanna go back, shower already because I'm sweating. Take the sunscreen off of all of my body and also all of, um, all the mosquito repellent because I'm already, I'm so prone to being bitten. And I think I've already been being bitten by like a couple, but I I think it would have been a lot worse if I hadn't like put anything any of that repellent on and sunscreen on so that's gonna be it from the sketch today thanks so much again for joining me and for sticking all the way to the end i really appreciate you guys and stay tuned for more learning from giant series whoa it's a series now all right she's going for it 
Um, stay tuned for more learnings that we're gonna continue to impart, not impart, continue to undertake on this channel because you know art is a learning process and I just it's it's fun to share the learning process with everyone. Alright, gonna get from me. I think the rain is starting to upgrade from like a drizzle to a very light pour. So I'm gonna head out and save all my camera equipment in the process. Thank you guys so much again and I'll catch you next time. Bye!